change of state. Now I want to explain the change of state. When a solid turns into a liquid and when a liquid turns into a gas. If you heat a solid, it turns into a liquid. If you heat a liquid, it turns into a gas and vice versa. If you cool a gas, it turns into a liquid and these are known as changes of state. The names of these changes are, you've got freezing, which is liquid to solid. You've got condensing, which is from gas to liquid. You've got boiling, which is from liquid to gas. And melting is from a solid to a liquid. And finally, don't forget earlier we mentioned evaporation, which is a change of state at below its boiling point. Now to explain the change of state in a simple way, I want to discuss how you turn ice from a freezer at any temperature into steam at any temperature. Well to do this you're going to need heat. Heat must be supplied to change its state. To change any solid at any temperature to a gas at any temperature, there's five steps. So these five steps cover everything you need to know about these changes of state. These five steps. You don't always have to use these five. You might only need one or two or three of them. But there are five potential steps. The first step is to heat the solid to its melting point. It has to be at its melting point before it can change its state. So you've got to get it to its melting point. So the melting point of water is zero degrees. If the ice is at minus 50 degrees, you've got to heat it 50 degrees to get it to zero. You've got to get it to its melting point. That's step one. Step two, now I want to change it from a solid to a liquid. So I want to melt the ice, but there's no increase in temperature. This is a change of state. So that's the second step. Step three, now I need to heat the liquid up to its boiling point. So before I can turn it into a gas, you've got to heat it to its boiling point. That's step three. Step four, I want to change the liquid from a liquid to a gas. So step four is turning water into steam, but with no increase in temperature. And step five is you're heating the gas to the temperature you require. So this might be to heat the steam to 200 degrees. They are the five steps. Now to carry out any of these steps we need heat. How much heat is required to heat up the ice then? Well this depends on its specific heat capacity. All substances, solids, liquid and gases have specific heat capacities and this is the heat required to raise the unit mass or to raise the raise one kilogram of that substance by one degree and that is its heat capacity. For example, if you wanted to make a cup of coffee, you would need to boil the water in a kettle or a pan. Now you should boil just enough water for what you need, otherwise you're heating all the water in the kettle and not using it and wasting a lot of energy. Also, if you use really cold water from the tap, it would take longer to boil in the kettle and take more energy than if the water was warmer. So the amount of energy required to boil the water depends on both the mass of water to be boiled and the increase in temperature required to get it to its boiling point. This is what the specific heat capacity tells you. It's the energy to require to raise the temperature of one kilogram of the substance by one degree C. Here are the specific heat capacities of ice, water and steam. As you can see the specific heat capacity of ice is 2108 joules per kilogram per kelvin. The water is 4187 joules per kilogram per kelvin and water vapour is 1996 joules per kilogram per kelvin. They are the specific capacities of ice, water and water vapour or steam. Now when heat energy is supplied to an object, its internal energy increases. This is because the molecules will move faster and so have more kinetic energy. When its internal energy increases, the corresponding increase in temperature will depend on its thermal capacity. The thermal capacity will depend on the material what it's made of. Some materials have high specific heat capacities, so you need a lot of energy to raise it by one degrees. And some, some products, some things don't. Some have low thermal heat capacities. So in other words, a bit of heat will increase its temperature quite a lot. Water has got a high specific heat capacity. It takes a lot of heat to raise the temperature of water by 1 degree C. So let's determine how much heat energy is required to convert ice at minus 10 degrees to steam at 250 degrees C. So now we're going to do an exercise explaining all the five steps. 
So what is the first step? Well, we need to heat the ice to its melting point, which is at 0 degrees C. The ice is at minus 10 at the moment, so we need to raise its temperature by 10 degrees to get it to zero. So what's the specific heat capacity of ice? Well, it's 2,108 joules per kilogram per Kelvin. We've got one kilogram of ice, so the heat required to raise one kilogram by 10 degrees is 10 times 2108, gives you 21,080 joules. So that's the first heat, heat input, step one. Step two is to convert the ice into water. To do this, we need energy, heat energy. Now, to change ice to water, this is known as the latent heat of fusion. And this is the heat required to convert one kilogram of the substance from a solid to a liquid, but there's no increase in temperature. And it's called latent heat because, because there's no change in temperature, the word latent means hidden. So the latent heat of fusion definition is the energy required to cause one kilogram of a substance to change state from a solid to a liquid at its freezing point. So that's the definition of the latent heat of fusion. Now what is the latent heat of fusion? Well for ice it's 334,000 joules per kilogram. So we need, we've only got one kilogram, so we need 334,000 joules of heat to convert the ice at its freezing point, which is zero, into water at zero. So I've not heated it up at all, I've just changed its state. So that's the step two. What is step three? Well now we need to heat the water to its boiling point to enable to turn it into steam. So we've got to raise it from zero degrees to 100 degrees C before we can turn it into steam. What do we need to know now? We need to know the specific heat capacity of water, which is 4,187 joules per kilogram per degree. We need to increase the temperature of the water now from 0 degrees to 100 degrees. So we need 4,187 times 100. We need to increase it by 100 degrees. We need 418,700 joules to heat the water up to its boiling point. So that's step three, 418,700 joules. Step four, now we need to change the liquid at 100 degrees C into steam, yeah? So now we're changing the state again, and this is known as the latent heat of vaporization. So what's the definition of the latent heat of vaporization? It's the energy required to cause one kilogram of a substance to change from a liquid to a gas at its boiling point. Remember, with no increase in temperature. So what is the latent heat of vaporization of water? Well, it's 2,260,000 joules per kilogram. Now this is extremely high. In other words, it takes about seven times more heat to change water into steam than it does to change ice into water. So step four, we need 2.26 million joules of energy to convert it. That's step four. What's step five? Well, now we want to raise the temperature of the steam from 100 degrees up to 250 degrees C. So that's a 150 degree rise. However, we need to know what the specific heat capacity of steam is. Well, it's 1,996 joules per kilogram per degree. So the heat energy required to raise it 150 degrees is 150 times 1,996 gives you 299,400 joules. So the total heat required to convert one kilogram of ice at minus 10 degrees to steam at 250 degrees is the sum of all those five steps. You add them all up, you get 3,333,180 joules of heat energy. That's the final answer. So do you understand the changes of state and the principles of the five steps? As I said, you don't have to use all five steps. For example, how would you determine how much heat was required to turn this cup of water at 20 degrees C into steam at 100 degrees C? Well, in this case, there's only two steps required. Step one, we need to heat the water up to its boiling point. And step two, we need to use the latent heat of vaporization to convert it into steam. Now, these five steps can be shown graphically here. This shows you a temperature time graph when ice is heated until it turns into steam. 
So it shows you the five steps. As you can see, this is step one here. This is heating the ice up to its melting point. To do this, you need the heat capacity of ice. Step two here is to turn the ice into water at the same temperature. So as you can see, energy is going in, but it's not actually raising the temperature. All it's doing is changing its state, and that's the latent heat of fusion. Step three here is to heat the water up to its boiling point. To do this, you need to know the specific heat capacity of water. Step four is to change the liquid at its boiling point into steam at the same temperature. And don't forget this is the latent heat of vaporization. Have you noticed there's no increase in temperature as this is just the change of state? Step five is to heat the steam up and this is the specific capacity of steam. That's what that shows you there, those five steps, those five steps. Let's do another example. How much heat is required to turn a 2.5 kilogram block of ice at absolute zero to water vapor at 200 degrees C? Now it gives you this information, all the specific heat capacities there and the latent heat. I'm going to go through these now. Don't forget the five steps. Step one, we've got to raise the temperature of the ice to its melting point. Step two, we've got to convert the ice to water. Step three, we've got to heat the water to its boiling point. Step four, convert the water to water vapour or steam. And step five, heat the water vapour to 200 degrees C. Right, let's work it out then. The first thing we need to do is get the ice up to its melting point, which is zero degrees C. At the moment, it's at zero degrees Kelvin, which is minus 273 degrees C. We've got to raise it by 273 degrees just to get it to its melting point. So to do that, we need to know the specific capacity of ice, and it's 2,108 joules per Kelvin per degree C. So then we need to raise it by 273 degrees and it's two and a half kilograms. Don't forget you've got to multiply by two and a half kilograms. It gives you 1,438,710 joules to get the ice to zero, get it to its melting point. Now we need to convert the ice to water by applying more heat. Don't forget, this is now we're looking at the latent heat of fusion and the re heat required to convert one kilogram of ice is 334,000 joules. So you multiply 334,000 joules by 2.5 because you've got 2.5 kilograms, it gives you 835,000 joules. Step three, we need to heat the water up now to its boiling point. Now we need to know the specific capacity of water which is 4187. We need to multiply that by the 100 degree C rise, multiply it by 2.5 because there's two and a half kilograms, it gives you 1,046,750 joules of heat. That is step three. Now we need to convert the water at its boiling point into steam. The heat required to do this is the latent heat of vaporization times the mass, which gives you 2,270,000 times 2.5, which is 5,675,000 joules. The last step is to heat the water vapor up to 200 degrees. The heat required for this is the specific heat capacity of water vapor times the temperature rise times the mass. If you multiply this out, it gives you 499,000 joules. That completes the step. All we do now is add up all the steps and it gives you 9,494,460 joules of heat energy. That is energy required to convert two and a half kilograms of ice at zero degrees Kelvin to water vapor at 200 degrees C. The high specific heat capacity and latent heat of vaporization of water is why water is used as an extinguishing agent. Water is a great cooling agent and it's used in sprinkler systems to put out fires. Water is released onto the burning fire and it absorbs heat from the fire whilst heating up and it takes a lot of heat away from the fire in turning to steam. Now in general not much of the water will be turned into steam and as we discussed the latent heat of vaporization of water is very very high so if you could get more of the water to turn into steam it would be much more efficient in fighting fires and that is when water mist systems come into play. These systems make the water droplets very very small and it means more of it will turn into steam and therefore you need less water in taking out the heat from the fire. 
Now don't forget what we talked about works both ways. If you cool something down, it gives off heat. And it's the same about this, the work, same working as with a specific heat capacity. For example, if water vapour at 200 degrees C was allowed to cool and convert back to ice at absolute zero, it would give off 9,494,460 joules of heat energy. In other words, it works both ways, going up and down. For example, determine the heat which is released when a 3.4 kilo kilogram brick, which has a temperature of 300 degrees, is allowed to cool down to ambient temperature in a room. By ambient, we mean about 15 degrees C. Now, the specific capacity of the brick is 855 kilojoules per kilogram per Kelvin. Well, the heat released is equal to Specific heat capacity times the temperature difference times the mass. Well, if you put them in the formula, it comes out at 537,795 kilojoules of heat energy is released. That's how much energy we release when that brick cools down to ambient temperature. For example, another one, how much heat energy is required to make a cup of boiling hot coffee? If the cup capacity is 0.25 litres, the water temperature is 15 degrees, the density of water is 1,000 kilograms per metre cubed, and the specific heat capacity of water is 4,187 joules per kilogram per kelvin. Well, firstly, we need to determine the mass of water to be heated. Well, we know that one metre cubed is 1,000 litres, so the mass is 0.25 times 1,000 divided by 1,000. So 0.25 litres is 0.25 kilograms. So that's the mass of water. And the heat energy required is the specific heat capacity times the temperature rise times the mass. If you put those in, it comes out 193,650 joules of heat energy is required to boil that cup. What is the increase in temperature of a 350 gram block of steel with a specific heat capacity of 350 joules per kilogram per Kelvin when 2,200 joules of heat energy is provided? Well, the change in temperature will be the amount of heat energy provided divided by the mass of the steel multiplied by the specific heat capacity. Remember to convert to the right units. 350 grams is 0.35 kilograms. So the temperature increase will be 2,200, which is the energy provided, divided by 350, which is the specific heat capacity, times the mass, 0.35. And that comes out at 17.9 degrees C. So that steel will increase by about 18 degrees. We cover specific heat capacity, but how would you determine it in an experiment? Well, you could carry out an experiment like this one here. You measure out a litre of water into a container. You place it into an insulated container. You've got to place it into an insulated container to minimise heat loss. Then you measure the initial temperature of the water. You place an electric heater of power, say 100 watts, into the water. Switch on the heater for, say, five minutes and then take the temperature of the water. Now make sure that you keep stirring the water to make it an even temperature. Then all you do is you process the results. If the temperature increase came out at 40 degrees C, you know the time taken, which is five minutes, which equates to 300 seconds. The energy transferred by the supply was 100 watts. Don't forget 100 watts is 100 joules per second of energy. Therefore, in 300 seconds, it will be 300 times 100, it's 30,000 joules of heat energy. So that's the total energy supplied, 30,000 joules. Now, if we assume that all the energy is supplied to the water, which was one litre, which would weigh one kilogram, then we know that 30,000 joules of energy have heated up one kilogram of water by 40 degrees C. So therefore, the specific heat capacity, all you do is you divide it by 40. 30,000 divided by 40 is 750 joules per kilogram per degree C. That is how you would determine the specific heat capacity of a liquid. Now, if you did this experiment, you would find that there would be some heat losses. So even though you insulate the container, there would be some heat losses. So it would be slightly different than what the accurate, the accurate work, working would be.
How would you determine the latent heat of fusion of a solid? What experiment could you do? Well, you could do something like this. You could fill a funnel with ice and place a 100 watt heater in the middle of the ice. Then you weigh the glass container below and place it under the funnel. After five minutes, remove the container and you measure the increase in its mass as this will be the amount of ice that's turned into water. So it's very simple, you put a known amount of energy in, see how much ice melts and you can work it out. Then you simply process the results. First of all, make sure you always convert into the right units. Five minutes is 300 seconds. The mass of water is 100 grams, so that's 0.1 kilogram. So what was the energy supplied? Well, it's 300 times 100, it was 30,000 joules. So that's how much energy you put in. And this has melted, we worked it out, 0.1 kilogram of ice. So the latent heat of fusion would be 30,000 divided by 0.1, it would be 300,000 joules per kilogram. That's an experiment on how to determine the latent heat of fusion of a solid. How could this principle be applied in an experiment to determine the latent heat of vaporisation? Well, it's the same principle. You would pour a known quantity of boiling water, say a litre, into a beaker and put in a heating element in, say 100 watts. You switch on the heater and when the water is just boiling, you take a measurement on the scales. You take a measurement. Then you start a stopwatch. Time how long it takes for, say, 20 grams of the water to evaporate. Then you process the results. If the time taken was 460 seconds, we know the energy supplied by the heater is 100 times 460, so we know the energy supplied was 46,000 joules. And what did it convert? It converted 20 grams of water into steam which is 0.02 kilograms. Therefore, the latent heat of vaporization, which would be of one kilogram, is 46,000 divided by 0.02. It comes out at 2.3 million joules per kilogram. That's how you would determine the latent heat of vaporization.